Design is not random. Coming up with great business ideas is not random. There's a way to go about creating things that are good and actually make good products, good designs, good things. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my entire engineering design process. I'm an engineer and an entrepreneur, and I've found that this process is key to creating successful products and solutions. You don't want to miss a single step. The first step in my design process is empathy. It's crucial to understand the needs and problems of the people you're designing for. Whether it's talking to them directly, observing their behavior, or conducting research, this step is critical to the success of your design. Before designing the Navigator, a mobility aid for people with lower limb amputations, I first did over 20 interviews with people who had lived experiences with limb loss, so I could understand what their pain points were. This was essential in creating a product that they would actually enjoy using. Once I've empathized with the target audience, it's time to define the problem I'm trying to solve. This step involves taking all the information I've gathered from my interviews and my research and narrowing it down to a clear and concise and objective list of clear design constraints. For example, many amputees told me that they wanted a product that they were able to take with them because when they went on trips to places like hotels, they weren't able to bring their shower chair. And often they were forced to shower sitting on the floor in dirty, slippery, unsanitary hotel bathrooms. From this, it was clear that the navigator had to be made to be compactable so that all of the pieces could be taken apart, fit into a small bag and taken with you to hotels. It also had to be lightweight. Look at me, I am no strong man. Waterproof height adjustable, safe to use in the shower, meaning sturdy and non-slip, and also allow the user to wash their residual limb in the shower. These were things that people with amputations wanted. And so having these design constraints in place makes the next step much easier and more tangible as you create your design. With the problem defined, it's time to ideate. This is the stage where you come up with as many solutions as you possibly can. The goal here is to just generate as many ideas as possible, no matter how crazy or unconventional they may seem. My ideal goal is usually to come up with at least 20 ideas, which I create hand sketches. Literally, I take a piece of paper and a pen and I just draw the ideas that come into my head and I list the pros and the cons for each one. This is where the best solutions are made and their problems are solved. This is the part where your creativity gets to kick in. And combined with an engineering mindset, you're able to really hone in on the best solution possible. In my ideation phase, I always implement an engineering ranking matrix where I rank and quantify the designs in respect to the design constraints that I came up with. And when I'm working with a client, the amount of ideation will depend on their budget. But when I'm working for myself and working on a project for liquid limbs, such as the Navigator, I go through this process several times until I'm sure I've come up with the best solution. And once I have my idea and I've narrowed it down to the best one, it's time to start prototyping. And this step involves creating a 3D model or a digital representation of your solution to allow you to get a better understanding of your idea. In some cases, I might want to test and validate this digital design using finite element analysis or different CAD programs. And in others, I might want to go back to the ideation phase and rethink my solutions. Oftentimes, because in this process, I thought of a way to make it more manufacturable or make it simpler in general, and then I would redo the 3D render. And in most cases, the way I am, I usually trust my design and prefer to get a physical prototype as fast as possible, which usually means some form of 3D printing. 3D printing is an incredible prototyping tool for taking your 3D model and turning it into a viable physical model that you can feel and hold in your two hands and find the flaws in your product design. I will go into much further detail into 3D printing and how this tool can be used for entrepreneurs in a future video. So do subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that. But in general, this is my go-to method of prototyping because it's fast and it's inexpensive and it's a great way to create an initial product. 
And now it's time to test the prototype and see how well it performs. This step involves collecting feedback from the target audience and using it to refine my design. I always create a series of tests that ensures I met or surpassed my original list of design constraints. For example, if it's a 300 pound weight requirement, then you're gonna to wanna to do some kind of instrom testing. Or if it's a more subjective thing like comfortable, then you're gonna to have to have your user base test the product itself. The final step in my design process is iteration. Here you can make changes to your prototype until you're satisfied with the results. This stage is where you keep refining and improving your design until you arrive at the final solution, or at least what we call a minimum viable product. After this, I consider the initial design phase complete, and then it becomes time to consult your manufacturer and figure out how you're gonna handle production of your new product. In conclusion, these are the six steps in my engineering design process. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test, and iterate. I find that following this process has always given me and my clients satisfaction in our designs, and it has been essential to my success as an engineer and an entrepreneur. I think it's important to note that this design process and style of thinking can be applied to any product, including softwares, apps, or other non-physical products, and that you can take these concepts and apply them to any design. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.